Hey everyone, Robert here, author of Expansion Mastery, the practical guide to living a fully engaged life. Are you ready to start living life to the fullest? Are you ready and willing to do what it takes to transform yourself and your life from ordinary to extraordinary? Then grab your favorite Zabuton, light your favorite incense, and let's get to it. Welcome, my friends, to the Fully Engaged Life. Welcome back to the show, everyone. I hope that you are enjoying the new series, uh, drawing upon the practices contained in my book, Expansion Mastery. And hopefully you had an opportunity to practice that first one and to see just the practical and natural nature of these things, because that's what it is. It's about uh, our humanity. It's about tapping into the potential that we have as human beings and connecting more deeply to nature, to the universe, to everything around us, as well as to the various levels of our nature, our body, our mind, and our essence. So what this series is doing is I'm going step by step through all of the practices that I presented in my book, I'm going to explain a little bit differently what they are, the same exercise, same practice, but what I'm going to do is give you a little bit more information and maybe even help you understand them from a different perspective, as well as just giving you insights from my own experiences with these practices that I still do in one form or another. Now, I know that a lot of people don't think of physical movement and things like that as being part of our spiritual practices. Uh, We have a tendency to have this incorrect belief established in our mind that anything spiritual has to be seated on the cushion and uh, that's all it is, right? Is just seated in some form of meditative practice and that's, but that's not true. That's really not true. There's more to it than that. And we need to engage our body because it's so directly linked to the mind. And we need to use the body and the mind as a way to then go into uh, reestablishing this sense of connection to our essence, to our consciousness, right? And then the idea is to bring all three of these into balance and live life in that fully actualized state where we are fully engaged with our physical body, our mind, and our essence. Okay, so let's get into the exercise, or as I refer to them in my book, challenge number two. This one is called stretch the body and jump for joy. Now, like I said, these are practical exercises, so stay with me because it isn't about being foofy and silly. These things have tremendous benefit. So let's start with the first things first and go into the idea of stretching the body. So in my book, I refer to the dragon body exercises, and this is a very specific set that I was taught in martial arts. It works very well. Um, I do basic Dao Yin uh, exercises, and then I do the Ryu Taindo uh, dragon body exercises, and that's my regimen. These are the ones that I found I like the best and I get the best benefit from. But there's a ton of different stretching programs out there. What I encourage you to do is to find one that appeals to you and then stick with it. I was having a discussion the other day with one of my students and I was telling them how uh, we have to resist the urge to be distracted by every new system that comes out and instead get one that appeals to us the most and then stick with it. I know everyone likes to attempt to reinvent the wheel, but let's face it, stretching is stretching, and there are right ways and wrong ways. So make sure that you check it out, run it by your physician or whatever you need to do to make sure it's a good, solid system and that you're physically capable of doing it without injury. But then grab that system and stay with it. 
stretch every day or however many days that it it suggests that you do that. But I think stretching is an extremely important factor in maintaining a sense of youthfulness. Stretching helps keep us young. I mean, look at so many of the other benefits in just having a basic stretching regimen. It enhances our physical performance in any outdoor activity, hiking, kayaking, even going for a walk, swimming, anything. Stretching is going to help us to be able to do those things better, uh, more easily, and without discomfort. It helps prevent muscle stiffness and soreness. It helps improve our posture. We end up with uh, a greater sense of stress relief and relief from tension headaches through stretching. Obviously, it increases our range of motion. And the more range of motion we have, the easier it is to move our bodies. And it's more effortless to do so. And then, of course, it increases blood flow to the muscle tissues. And it's even linked to helping us lower cholesterol levels to some degree. It helps us to alleviate or even prevent back pain. And it has a direct link to calming the mind. Imagine that. Through stretching our body, we have a greater sense of calm and peacefulness in the mind. See how they're related? The Chinese and Japanese people know this extremely well. Anytime that I've been in China or Japan, I've been to parks where uh, older people, you know, 70s, 80s, 90s, and even beyond, are in the park and they are out there with their friends or their group and engaging in a social activity, but they're all stretching together. And these people are incredibly flexible and the quality of life is so much better because they can move around without pain and discomfort. They're not hobbling around, right? They're very spry, even at that age. Even some of the people we met and talked to were in their 90s and they had better flexibility than I've ever had in my life. It is amazing. It helps to keep us healthy. We need to keep the muscles healthy and we need to keep our spine healthy as well. So a lot of stretching helps us stretch the spine, stretch the back in ways that keeps the spine healthier. And we of course know that that has a direct correlation with our sense of longevity. And this is where I personally learned the lesson from the people that we have met in China and Japan because they are so active and so healthy and mentally sharp as well. And then in contrast, we look in the West and we see how as we age here in the West, everybody is sitting on their butt watching TV or doing something, sitting down all the time. They spend almost all their time sitting down. They're not out there being active and engaging the world. And this is something that my wonderful wife and I noticed where we live now is that the tendency is for people, even as they age, to remain active and get outdoors and do things. We've been uh, hiking Mount Tamalpais before and there's people up there mountain biking that are obviously well into their 70s and they are just flying up and down that mountain. It is incredible. I love to see that. It's always so inspiring. We have to understand that just because we age doesn't mean we have to sit and rot away becoming decrepit and unhealthy, not enjoying our life anymore. We can still be out there living and stretching will help us to be able to do that. So while I give you an example of what I use to share what I use personally and what I know, I recommend any good stretching program. But, you know, do your homework. Make sure that it's a good program, that it's not something silly that somebody that doesn't really know what they're doing has put together. In the case of my, I like to stick with a more martial-based uh, stretching programs that I have learned in China and Japan and continue to study. But everybody has 
what appeals to them, and it doesn't matter what it is. I know yoga is extremely popular right now, and you get some good muscular stretching in that as well, as long as it's a valid program. If you're doing the thing where you're holding on to your dog the whole time or drinking beer, I just don't even bother. Um, I mean, they're all coming up with these silly gimmicks uh, that, that diminish the effectiveness of the actual exercise and what yoga is meant to be. So make sure you're getting a good program. Make sure that you go there and observe and that it's a good valid teaching and not some marketing gimmick. And of course, always check with your physician before you engage in any physical exercise. Make sure that you're okay to do that. And start out slow. So many people are in a rush and they hurry and then they end up pulling a muscle or they get so sore that it deters them from engaging in the exercise anymore. My recommendation is to go nice and easy. Hey, just do about 70% of what you can do, hang out in that area, and then start to push it a little more and a little more once you get used to it. But be very gentle with yourself. There's no sense in causing an injury. Injury is only going to set you back. It's not going to help you go forward. And I've had friends, personal friends, who have used stretching machines, which I used to do as well, uh, but they were, were very competitive. And in order to get ahead of me or uh, some of the other folks, they would really push themselves too far and injury occurred uh you know they ended up blowing out their back and having a very serious uh back uh, surgery from that um, i myself have torn hamstring muscles from pushing it too much so avoid those mistakes just do a little bit at a time and stay healthy and one important and often overlooked component with Stretching is breathing. Make sure to coordinate your breathing with the stretching. And that'll also correlate with uh, how it improves your posture, right? So if we have good posture, we are incorporating our breath and then engaging the stretch. Now you're getting tremendous benefit. And then the second part of this exercise is jumping for joy. Now, I know that sounds a little foofy, but I did it as a little uh, wink, a little wink and a nod to a a program that I found quite uh, funny. Uh, My name is Earl, and there's an episode in there about jumping for joy. So if you know the program, you know what I'm talking about. So I kind of named it that. So it sounded a little... uh, new agey, a little foofy, and I put that in there on purpose, but that's not how I meant it. The real uh, idea is that it's a little nod to uh, uh, this program that I used to watch. And on a more serious note, when we have the ability to leap and uh, leave gravity behind for a moment, And we have the physical capacity to jump up a little bit, no matter how high, even if it's just a few inches off of the ground, just kind of jumping and coming down. It brings a sense of joy. Have you ever watched children play? When children play, they're jumping around all the time, even small children. And when they're jumping and bouncing, they're smiling. They enjoy that movement, that activity. It's good for the body. Shaking up the body like that is very, very good for it. And when people jump, remember the people jump and their hands are up in the, the air reaching towards the sky and they pull their knees up and their back is arched a little bit. And it's just this incredibly joyous, free type of feeling that they're leaping because they're so happy. They're filled with this energy and, and this leap is a way to uh, expel some of that excess energy that is built up in their body. And this is on the serious note, what it was named after is this type of joyful leaping because the body was meant to be able to leave the ground from time to time. And once again, we can see how sitting is so detrimental, whereas getting up and stretching and uh, just doing some some jumping around is very beneficial, very freeing, very enjoyable for the body. And as always, make sure that you check with a physician before doing it to avoid ankle injuries and things. I always recommend that when you leap, start out just 
raising your feet off the ground or don't even leave the ground. Just kind of come up off of your heels onto the balls of the feet and get used to setting the foot back down, starting with the ball of the foot down to the heel and then bending the knees. Never, ever, ever land with your knees locked. You will damage yourself. I've seen that. Uh, We had a, a student uh, many, many decades ago now, back when I was doing uh, Taekwondo, and we had uh, a young man who was getting ready to go to the Olympic training camp, and he came back. He had been there for maybe a month or something, and he came back to the school and uh, was talking with everybody, and he took in a class, and then afterwards he was doing some training to uh, uh, keep up with his practices before going back to the camp, and he ended up landing uh, Uh, After a a high-flying kick, he ended up landing on one knee. His knee was locked too much, and he blew his knee completely out. Unable to ever walk right again, let alone do anything like Taekwondo. Took him right out out of the Olympic hopefuls, right? It was so tragic. We want to avoid any type of injury. Hey, even if we're just going a few inches off the ground, the potential for injury is there. So do this very slowly, carefully, and safely. And if you need to, check with somebody uh, that's very well versed in this to help you out. And I know this jumping seems like, well, this doesn't seem like it has much for value. It doesn't seem like it's got a lot to offer as far as a spiritually based exercise. And to that, I would say, whoa, hold the phone. (laughs) Yep, that one's for my wife. I had to slip that in there. Okay, so let's look at some of the benefits that jumping provides, shall we? Jumping around helps improve our bone density. Ah, well, that's a major problem as we age, isn't it? That could be very helpful. Not to mention it burns calories. I mean, look at any aerobics program. They usually contain some sort of jumping around or bouncing, right? So obviously you're going to burn some calories. It improves your sense of overall coordination, improves your cardiovascular health, hence why it's used in so many cardio programs. It helps you to breathe more efficiently. It improves your ability to stay calm under stressful situations, and it helps the internal organs to remain healthier so they don't get old and atrophy, right? They move around in there. This is good if you you understand anything about chi. It's good to uh, jiggle the the organs, move them around a little bit, one so they don't atrophy to one another and end up giving you some very severe problems. Uh, And it allows for the the chi to then uh, encapsulate around the organs better as well. I mean, so many benefits. Plus, let's face it, it just feels good. It just feels good. So am I still doing stretching and jumping for joy? Oh my goodness, you better believe it. Okay, you better believe it. Stretching every day. My wife and I are stretching all of the time. Uh, We do solo stretching. Uh, We go into our home dojo and we sit and we stretch. We do our own stretching. Uh, We do the Tao Yin. We do the dragon body exercises. We do some other practices that we have learned in China and Japan. And then we partner stretch. We help each other to really stretch it out. And you got to be extremely careful with that. But uh, her and I do that. So we get to uh, stretch together and help one another this way. It's really fantastic. Plus, we really enjoy doing everything together anyway. So this is just one more way we get to do that. And then the leaping. Well, in some of the martial styles in which we train, my wife and I, leaping is a part of the actual system. So we get to practice leaping a lot. We do a lot of uh, leaping and striking drills and leaping around and you know landing and going into some rolling and different things like that. So we get to really move around. Just like leaping is a wonderful thing, I look at that as another heavenly exercise because we're leaving the ground and we're going up. And then a nice earth exercise uh, to complement this would be to do you know your front rolls and back rolls and side rolls and basic break falls as a way to to really uh, work yourself in a principle of heaven and earth, this Tenchi uh, principle. So 
Yes, I still work these things, and whenever possible, I like to just take a moment and and just do some light, easy leaping, just a few inches off the ground, maybe six, eight inches off the ground, nothing more than that, and you can do far less than that. Again, be very careful with yourself, but I like to go about six, eight inches off the ground and just kind of hop, just kind of bounce up this way and really get to work my ankles and my knees and just have some fun with it. Keeping light. See, this helps us stay light on our feet. This helps us to lighten up. Uh, you know, as we, we walk around, we're slamming on concrete all of the time. Uh, most people are falling into their steps, so you've got this incredible compression happening on your spine all the time. This gives us a way to stretch that back out when we leap up this way. If you leap up from your head instead of always trying to push from your feet, but if you actually start the movement from the top of the head and then allow the legs to follow to take you up, you can stretch your spine this way, right? And then we're working uh, on increasing the fluids in the body. So we're working on increasing the synovial fluids in the ankles and knees by stretching them out this way, having no compression as we're in the air. And the same thing with the spinal fluid through all of the uh, vertebra in the spine. So you can see so many benefits with this and it just feels good. And one thing that I really enjoy is I can tell when my wife's really excited about something because all of a sudden there'll be more bounce in her walk than normal. And she's up on her toes a little more. And it always makes me laugh to see that because I take such joy in knowing that she's excited and happy to such a degree. Uh, and, and it's wonderful to see, but see how uh, it's all the energy welling up inside her and, and her body wants to go up and it wants to bounce and wants to, and that is fantastic. It's when we're walking around and feeling heavy and sluggish and that's just not healthy. So you can see that uh, these things are helping us to improve our physical health. It's pretty hard to actually get anywhere to uh, progress with meditation when we're in physical pain and discomfort. If our body is not right, if our mind is not right, then doing anything that connects us to the spiritual realm is extremely, extremely difficult. So this is another reason why we want to work on getting our body into proper condition to facilitate holding the postures and different things like that as we engage in our spiritual practices. Now, one of the other things with this light jumping around that we're doing that most people forget or neglect is to make sure you have a good pair of shoes. Okay, Go to somewhere where the people actually know about tennis shoes because most people don't realize that tennis shoes, the inside soles are built you know, to tip your foot one side or the other depending on your arch and all of these things. And some shoes are made for this type of activity, while well, many are not. So make sure you go to somebody that's not just trying to sell a, a pair of shoes on commission, somebody that doesn't really know what they're doing or just likes them for the style. Uh, you might want to find a store where they have people running it that actually know what they're doing and what their products are about. And if you get a good pair of shoes, I've, I've stressed this to my students for many, many years. I mean, at least the past two decades, I've been openly stressing this to people. And I have had so many students come to me and go, oh my goodness, you were right. I was having this problem and that problem and they got me in the right pair of shoes. They were showing me how my other pair of shoes had the, the uh, an insole in it from the factory, right? Where the way they came, that was actually uh, accentuating my problem and this will help correct it. And my knees already feel better. My my hips already feel better. My ankles already feel better. See what I'm saying? So be very, very mindful about the shoes you buy. Get the right tool for the job. And of course, you'll be able to use those shoes when you're doing, you know, your aerobic activity or uh, hiking or whatever it is too. So make sure that you get the, the good shoes for the job and you're able to uh, use them for a variety of purposes. Now, 
If you want more details on this and exactly about the stretching that I am doing, I did detail it out in the book, Expansion Mastery. So grab yourself a copy of that and you can actually go through there and read step by step one of the stretching uh, programs that I engage in and I really like. I, no, I did not develop it. It's been around for a very, very, very long time. And that's one of the things I like about it. It's tried and true, right? So get up and move. Get up and move. And while you're moving, you can get up and move to www.expansionmastery.com. Check out my all-new website. It's really great. There's some new content on there. I wrote a couple new really good articles, I think, uh, that I posted. So check those out. Make sure that you're sharing these podcasts. I'm seeing that more and more people are starting to share it. And I am so grateful for every single one of you for doing that. Thank you very, very much, and I mean that very sincerely, because it's only together that we will be able to maintain a sense of authentic spirituality and get it to the people at this time when we all need it most to help facilitate the great consciousness shift. Let's help everyone wake up, and let's continue to awaken ourselves in the process. Also, do the social media thing and subscribe to my YouTube channel at Robert D. Bessler where you can find uh, the podcast. Also jump on uh, Twitter and, and Facebook and all of that stuff and you know hit the likes, the subscribes, the follows and leave some positive comments hopefully uh, and, and yeah, help engage us and get us out there. But the most important thing is to subscribe and share and know just To be totally transparent, no, I do not receive any money whatsoever for any of these podcasts or anything that I share on uh, social media. Um, The only thing that I get paid for are the products and programs on my website. That's it. So all of this is to try and preserve authentic spirituality and to assist in uh, the awakening during this specific time in history as I continue on my own path of awakening as well. And as usual, I wish you all the best in your practices and your life, my friends. Please take care.